Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on Forgotten Weapons. I'm Ian, I'm here today again at the Rock Island Auction House, taking a look at some of the guns coming up for sale in their June of 2015 regional auction. Now, yesterday we took a look at an early 1879 pattern Reich's Revolver. Today, I want to take a look at the gun that evolved from it, the 1883 Reich's Revolver. Uh, as, as with many countries, uh, you know, the Germans initially adopted this rather huge revolver and it only took a couple of years for them to realize that you know, this thing was really too big. It was a bit cumbersome. It was unnecessary to have it that large. And so they replaced it with a newer pattern of slightly smaller revolver built on the exact same, basically the same frame and lock work. Well, these aren't particularly well-known guns compared to some other types of revolvers, this was actually the standard German handgun uh, from 1883, clear through uh, when the 1908 Luger was adopted. These were used through World War I, and frankly, they even saw some use into World War II, uh, particularly with groups like the Volkssturm at the end of the war who needed any gun they could get their hands on. Uh, in particular, these saw use in, in German colonial uh, adventures, and they were made both for the military and also for commercial sale. Officers at this time would have to provide their own sidearms, and the companies making 1883 Reich's revolvers certainly made higher grade ones specifically to try to sell or market to military officers. We have an example of that here, as well as a standard military issue one as well. So why don't, um, with any, any further ado, why don't I bring the camera back here and let's look at some of the details of how these differed from the early 1879 pattern, 83. Obviously, the barrel has been shortened. They got rid of this barrel flange or rib because it's frankly just not necessary. The, frame, the grip has been reshaped a bit. So on the early guns, it, it was much more swept back. On the later guns, it's much closer to being a vertical grip. Uh, there, neither one of them is particularly ergonomic, but I would agree the 1883 is probably the better of the two uh, for a modern style of shooting. They did also change the cylinder uh, removal mechanism slightly. It's, it's a little simpler to use on the 1883, and you don't have any loose parts to lose, which is a definite improvement. Now, the actual frame and lock work are identical. You can see things like uh, these pins are all in the same place. The cylinders uh, are effectively interchangeable. Uh, the tolerances don't quite match up. You can't swap cylinders between guns, but the design is identical. They're in the same caliber, of course. So this is our military example. We still have the safety on it. So when I have the gun at half cock, I can engage a safety. That prevents me from cocking the revolver. This was, I really think, a pretty dubious value. Uh, really, the only thing it lets you do is carry the gun with six rounds in the cylinder without worrying about the hammer dropping on one should you bump the gun or drop the gun. Um, beyond that, there's not really any point to it. This is a single action only gun. This particular example was made at the Air Force Armory in 1893. Definitely a, a military production gun. This would have been issued to somebody. In fact, we have on the back strap. This is not uncommon to find on Reich's revolvers. In fact, many German guns from this era. We have a unit mark on the back. So it initially was sent to this unit. They later uh, transferred it. So this unit got marked out. Our new cylinder removal mechanism. Instead of having a screw to remove, we have a little flat spring on this side and a plunger here. And you can see as I push that in, and move over, and when I have this fully depressed, it allows me to pull the cylinder access pin out. It is, however, very tight. There we go. So, this does double as an ejector rod if you are desperate. You can see we have recessed chambers, uh, recessed case heads, the same as the early pattern guns. This was a definitely a good idea, and they kept it. Really nothing else has changed on the cylinder. This retains the very heavy hammer spring of the 1879s. Again, these, these were designed to be rugged and durable and dependable, not quick or efficient to use. So once it's loaded, there is no ejector on the gun like the 1879. 
you have to, you, you have an ejector rod carried separately in your holster that you would use, pull out and use to eject your empty cases and then reload from the rear. This is not meant to be reloaded quickly or in action. When your pistol runs out of shots, you, you're supposed to go and use a saber instead. Or frankly, you're probably supposed to be using the saber first and have the revolver only in case of emergency. Now, I also want to take a look at a commercial or officer's model gun. These would have been made to a nicer finish than the standard infantry guns. Um, this particular one was manufactured by Dreisey. And as you'll have noticed, if you look anywhere down by the trigger guard here, there are some definite differences. We have a spur on the trigger guard, and we actually have two triggers in there. The reason for that is that this is actually a double action example. So pulling the front trigger fires the gun in double action. Or you can cock the hammer manually and fire it by use of the rear trigger. As with uh, some other early revolvers, for example, the, the US Civil War era star double action revolvers, this front trigger is actually just a cocking lever. So what it does technically is just there we go, cock the gun and then the rear trigger fires it. But if you simply make a long single pull on this front trigger, it will cock the gun and then this trigger will actually push the rear trigger backwards, firing the gun for you. So in practical usage, it, might, it, it is effectively a normal double action. However, mechanically, it is not. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. It was really cool to be able to look at both a military version and also the, the officer's or uh, commercial sale version of these 1883 Reichs revolvers. These two are both coming up for sale, of course. This is an auction house. So if you'd be interested in having them, they will be available through Rock Island. Check out the link in the description text below. That will take you to the catalog page where these are displayed. And uh, you can take a look at their pictures and their description. And if you like what you see, you can place a bid online right then and there. Now, good luck and thanks for watching.